Hello students, uh, we are lecturers from KDU College. We have prepared for you videos on mathematics past year paper 2018, paper 1 and paper 2 solutions. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Malini and I've been teaching for the past 20 years. Hello everyone, my name is Morgana. I'm an A-level lecturer. I have been teaching since 2012. Hello everyone, my name is Raymond. I'm a business faculty lecturer. I've been teaching for the past 15 years. Hi students, I'm Cheng. I'm an A-level lecturer. I've been teaching for about 9 years. So hope you will uh, learn from the videos that we post and good luck for your upcoming SPM. Question 1. Round off 890,486 correct to three significant figures. Three significant figures. So since this is less than five, then the answer would be 890,000. So the answer is C. Question 2. Diagram 1 shows four cards labelled with numbers arranged in ascending order. Starts with 1583-4962-Q and 6007. So the answer between 4962 and 6007 would be a number with four digits, ranging from any numbers from 4963 to 6006. So if you look at the options given, A, 5.32 times 10 to the power of 4, which the answer would be, it's to the power of 4. So we will move the decimal 4 digits. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the answer would be 5, 3, 2, 0, 0. So this is 5 digit. This cannot be the answer. Next, 5.32 times 10 to the power of 3. So we will move 3 digits from the decimal. 1, 2, 3. So the answer would be 5, 3, 2, 0. So 5, 3, 2, 0 is definitely between the range of 4, 9, 6, 2 and 6, 0, 0, 7. Let's see the next answer. 5.32 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Negative 3, we would move the decimal to, the, to your left hand side. 3 digits. 1, 2, 3. So the answer would be 0 0.00532. Definitely not the answer. Followed by D, 5.32 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Which means we have to move to the left four digits three four then the answer would be 0 0.00532 so the answer for this question two would be b question three poor norma packed 25 kilogram of candy during her daughter's wedding all of the candy were put into 200 small containers and distributed to the guests. Calculate the average mass in gram of candy in each container. You are given 25 kilogram. The answer requires you to be in grams. So the first step, step one, would be to convert 25 kilograms to 25,000 grams. If 25,000 times 1,000 grams is equivalent to 25,000 grams. Then step two would be 25,000 grams divided by 200 small containers. Then this would give you an answer of 125 grams. If you look at the choices given to you, you do not see 125 grams. However, you see 1.25 times 10 to the power of negative 2 and 1.25 times 10 to the power of 2. So A and D cannot be the answer. So the answer would be 125 grams if I were to convert into 
the power it would be 1 2 so 1.25 times 10 to the power of 2 so the answer is clearly C question 4 given that P to the base 5 equals to 3 for 7 base 8 find the value of P so let's find what is 3 for 7 to the uh, base 8 3 4 7 would be 3 times 8 to the power of 2 plus 4 8 to the power of 1 and 7 8 to the power of 0 so 8 to the power of 0 is 1 so this would be 7 plus 32 and 8 to the power of 2 64 3 times 64 would be 192 so this would give you an answer of 231 231 let's change the base 2 3 1 since P is base 5 this would give you 46 yes 1 when you divide 5 you will get 9 balance 1 divide 5 you will get 4 and divide 5 0 this would give you 1 so this would be 1 1 1 4 1 1 base 8 so looking at the answer the answer would be B question 5 1 0 1 1 1 0 subtract 1 0 1 1 1 so this would give you 10 subtract 1 1 10 subtract 1 1 10 subtract 1 1 0 subtract 0 0 0 subtract 1 1 so as you see the given answer is 1 P 1 Q 1 therefore the miss P would be 0 and Q would be 1 so the answer would be B question 6 Diagram 2 shows a combination of three polygons. PQR is a straight line. PQR is a straight line. The first polygon has six sides, second polygon has five sides, and the third polygon has four sides. In order to find an angle of any sides given, the formula would be N minus 2 multiply 180 degrees divided by N will give you one angle this polygon has six sides hexagon therefore we would take 6 minus 2 times 180 degrees divided by 6 and this would give you 120 degrees all sides has equal angle therefore each angle would be 120 20 degrees respectively second polygon has five sides a pentagon therefore the angle for a pentagon with equal sides would be 5 minus 2 multiply 180 degrees divided by five sides and that would give you 108 degrees so this would be 108 degrees for every side of a pentagon so given that this is 120 degrees this is also 120 degrees this is 108 degrees this 
is 108 degrees, this would also be 108 degrees. Since this is a straight line, if this is 180, since uh, 108 degrees, a straight line would give you 180 degrees. Therefore, this angle would be 180 degrees. Let's name this as X. So X would be 180 degrees minus 108 degrees, which would give you 72 degrees. So this is equivalent to 72 degrees. This is 90 degrees, 72 degrees, and this would be a circle. A circle would give us 360 degrees. Therefore, in order to get this angle, let's name it as Z. So Z would be 360 degrees minus 120 degrees minus 108 degrees. And this would give you 132 degrees 132 degrees so if you want to find the angle of y therefore y plus x plus z plus 90 degrees since this is a four-sided polygon that would give you 360 degrees this means y would be 360 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 72 degrees and minus 132 degrees therefore y would be 66 degrees the answer would be c question 7 in diagram 3 P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W is a regular octagon. A regular octagon meaning there are eight equal sides. And U, J, K, L, M, T is a regular hexagon. A regular hexagon would mean there is six equal sides. And followed by R, N, M, T, S, a irregular polygon with five sides. So the question requires you to calculate the value of x plus y. x plus y. Again, any polygon with equal sides to find the angle of each side would be n minus 2 multiply 180 degrees divided by n. For an octagon with 8 sides, this would mean 8 minus 2 multiply 180 degrees divided by 8. Each angle would be 135 degrees, meaning this is 135 degrees, this is 135 degrees, this is 135 degrees, this is 135 degrees. Similarly, for a hexagon with 6 equal sides, then we would be getting 6 minus 2 times 180 degrees divided by 6. This would give you 120 degrees for each angle. 120 degrees, 120 degrees, 120 degrees. For all angles would be 120 degrees. Since QRN is a straight line, LMN is a straight line, a straight line would give you 180 degrees. So if this is 135 degrees, this would give you 45 degrees. If this is 135 degrees, this is a circle. So this reflex angle would be 360 degrees minus 135 degrees. That would give you 225 degrees so this would be 225 degrees and how do we find this angle again this is also a circle 360 degrees minus 135 degrees minus 120 degrees this would give you 105 degrees
So this is 45, this is 225 degrees, this is 105 degrees. This would give you 180 minus 120, this is 60 degrees. For an irregular polygon with five sides, the total degrees would be an uh, irregular pentagon would be n minus 2 multiply with 180 degrees. So 5 minus 2 multiply 180 degrees would give you 540 degrees. So to find x, x would be 540 degrees minus 225 minus 45 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 105 degrees. So that would give you 105 degrees. So X is 105 degrees. Again, Y is also part of a circle. We have 135 degrees here, 120 degrees here. Therefore, Y would also mean 360 degrees minus 135 degrees minus 120 degrees which will also give you 105 degrees therefore find the value of x plus y means 105 plus 105 degrees would give you 210 degrees so the answer is a question 8 in diagram 4, TPQ is a tangent to the circle at P. Find the value of sine theta. In order to find the value of sine theta, we have to find the value of theta. Angle between tangent and chord is equal 48 degrees would be equal to the alternate segment of the substandard by the chord. So if this is 48, then the alternative segment angle would also mean is equal to 48 degrees. So this is 50 degrees, this is 48 degrees. So this is a cyclic quadrilateral in a circle. So in order to find theta, this total angle and theta 50 degrees plus 48 degrees plus theta would give you 180 degrees therefore theta would be 180 degrees minus 50 minus 48 degrees so theta would give you 82 degrees so theta is 82 degrees. So how do we find sine theta? It's the same as sine 82 degrees. So using your calculator, sine 82 would give you 0 0.9903. So the answer is B. Question 9. P is a translation negative to 3 and Q is a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. origin. State the coordinate of the image of 0.25 under the combination transformation PQ. So if we were to draw a grid 0, 0, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it says P is a translation and Q is a clockwise rotation and the point given is coordinate 2, 5. Coordinate 2, 5 would be a coordinate here. So 
you are expected to find the image of point X under the combination transformation PQ. When you stated PQ, then you have to do Q first, then followed by P. Since Q is a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, this is the origin, therefore this is a straight line from the origin coordinate 2, 5 and if you were to rotate 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees and Q clockwise rotation 90 degrees would lead to 5, negative 2. So you have completed the first transformation Q followed by a translation negative 2, 3. So from this point, the image has to move negative 2, 3. So negative means you have to move to the left, not to the right. So if you were to move negative 2 to the right, then it's from 5, 4, 3. And move up, since it's positive 3, means you have to move up 3, not down negative 3. So if you were to move, so this is 3, negative 2, and you move 1, 2, 3. So you will come to 3, 1. So this is your final image of X under the transformation P, Q. So the answer is C. Question 10. Diagram 5 shows triangles E and F drawn on a square grid. F is the image of E under an enlargement. Find the center of an enlargement. So in order to find the center of enlargement, we can find the intersection where each point of the image and the en uh, original meet the intersection point. So if we were to draw a point from E to F, E to F, and E to F. So this clearly shows that all three points, the intersection is at point S. So this is the center of the enlargement of image F from E. So the answer would be D, S. Question 11. Diagram 6 shows point P on a Cartesian plane. Find the value of cos theta. Let's name this as alpha. A 90 degrees triangle. This is negative 8. So this would be 8. This would be 17, 15. So using a Pythagoras theorem, 8, 15. So OP would be 17. So as you know, cos theta is negative since this is at the fourth quadrant, negative adjacent over hypotenuse. This is your hypotenuse, this is your adjacent and this is opposite. So cos theta is equivalent to negative cos theta. Therefore, cos theta is negative 8 over 17. 8 over 17. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So the answer would be C. Question 12. Which graph represent part of the graph y equals to cos x? 
So you have four different diagrams, graphs A, B, C, D, and which one of these would represent Y equals to cos X. So let's take your calculator and if you were to put, let's take cos 360 degrees. If you were to press cos 360, that would give you 1. So at cos 360, at 360 degrees, your curve should be cutting at 1. So if you see on the options given to you under A, B, C, cos 360 equals to 1. This shows negative 1. So this can't be the answer. This doesn't even reach 360. This gives you, this is not the answer. So the only possible answer would be D. Just to double check, let's try cos 270 degrees. So cos 270 degrees would give you a zero. So this confirms cos 270 degrees is equivalent to zero. So the answer y equals to cos x, the best graph, the answer is D. Question 13. Diagram 7 shows a pyramid with isosceles triangle x, y, z as a horizontal base. x, y, z is the horizontal base. Name the angle between the line w, x and the plane x, y, z. So x, y, z is the base and they want the angle of w, x and the base. So the only way we can connect this line to the base would be joining w, y, x to w, x. So the angle, this is perpendicular 90 degrees angle. Therefore, the line WX to the base XYZ would be the angle of WXY. So it is the angle of WXY, this angle here. So the answer is A. Question 14. Diagram 8 shows a vertical pole. KT, KT is on a horizontal ground tied by two pieces of string KJ and KL. Question requires which of the following has the same value of the angle of depression of L from K? Angle of depression from K to L. So if we see here, these are two parallel lines. Therefore, any angle, an angle of R would be the same here as R. Why? Because these are alternate angles. Alternate angle. Therefore, the answer that is looking, the angle looking from K to L would be R, the same angle given. So the answer would be C. Question 15. Diagram 9 shows two houses, P, uh, Q and R, in a residential area. S is a water tank located on the top of a hill and vertically above point P. So PS is a straight line. The angle of depression of point Q from point S is 50 degrees. So the depression point Q from point S. So let's draw a line from S to Q and says that this angle point of depression is 50 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. The length given PS is 30 meters. This is a right angle triangle given this Q angle as 50 degrees. And the distance between Q and R is 10 
meters. Q and R is 10 meters. Question, calculate the angle of elevation of point S from point R. So, draw another line connecting S to R. So, you are required to find the point of angle of elevation, which is, let's name it as theta. We do not know. This is the angle that we are supposed to find. So if this is 50 degrees and let's assume if you were to straighten this line then if this is 50 degrees then this whole angle will also be 50 degrees the alternate angle okay so now we know this is 30 this is 50 degrees so as Pythagoras theorem says this is adjacent this is opposite and this is hypotenuse so the first step would be to find the distance of PQ by only finding the distance of PQ then we can find the angle of theta using the distance from P to R so we know the formula tangent of any angle is opposite over adjacent. So based on the information given, we know that tangent 50, tangent 50 is opposite over adjacent. So tangent 50 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So then, how do we find the length of PQ, which is the adjacent would be 30 divided by tangent 50. This would give you, so you can take your calculator and 30 divided by tangent 50. This would give you. 25.173 meters so you will get 25.173 meters which is the distance from P to Q so now we know that the length from P to R is actually 35.173 so the distance of P R would be 25.173 plus 10 meters which is equivalent to 35.173 meters so now to proceed again this is also a right angle triangle this is opposite adjacent would be PR 35.173 so given the angle that we do not know again this would be tangent theta would be opposite over adjacent 35.173 so again using your calculator how do you find theta so using your calculator so you have to press shift tangent 30 divided 35.173 which would give you 40, 40 point four six, which is equivalent to 40 degrees and 28. So the answer is B. Question 16. Diagram 10 shows the position of points K s n and f on the horizontal plane point k is due north of s so to attempt question 16 you have to draw the lines according to the information given so the first point says point k is due north of s so then we can draw a straight line showing that it is a north to 
north of S. Next, the bearing of N from F is 160 degrees. So if the question is about bearing, then one has to draw the axis north, south, east and west, then it will be easier to do the question based on bearing. And we have another point F, which says is also bearing question. Okay, so the second point says the bearing of N from F is 160. Let's connect the points F and N first. So when you connect point F and N, you'll get a straight line connecting F and N. So then we know the bearing of N from F is 160 degrees. So this is 160 degrees. So if this is a straight line, a straight line has 180 degrees. If this is 160 degrees, then this small angle would be 20 degrees. If this small angle is 20 degrees, this is also 20 degrees. Okay. So now the next point, the bearing of S from N is 50 degrees. So let's connect S and N first. And it says the bearing of S from N is 50 degrees. So then we know if this is 50 degrees, this is also 50 degrees. This is 50 degrees. This is 50 degrees. Then the last information given is given FS is equivalent to FN. So if we were to draw, it becomes a triangle which says FN and FS are equal. So we know that this is 20 degrees and this is 50 degrees, meaning that this angle is 70, meaning this angle will also be 70 degrees. Since this is a triangle, 70, 70, then this is 160, this is 20. So now they say, the question is asking, find the bearing of F from S. That means they want you to find the bearing of S from F. So it will be this whole angle here. And we know this is a straight line. The straight line is equivalent to 180 degrees. Then we have 50 degrees and 70 degrees. Therefore, the answer of bearing F from S would be a straight line 180 degrees plus 50 degrees and plus 70 degrees. This will give you 300 degrees. So the answer is D. Question 17. Express PQ minus P cube Q over 1 minus P squared. Divide Q over 2P plus 2 in its, sim, its simplest form. So if we write PQ minus P cube Q over 1 minus P squared divided Q over 2P plus 2. So here we have to factorize all possible uh, equations so that it can be to the simplest form. So we see there is a common denominator uh, numerator here, P and Q. So we can actually factorize it PQ 1 minus P squared divided 1 minus P squared. Now since it's divide, we have to change it to multiply. And when we change divide to multiply, we have to reciprocal this equation and then it will become 2 in bracket p plus 1 over q. So here clearly says that you can actually uh, 
1 minus p square divided by 1 minus p square and we have a common number uh, alphabet here q and q so then we are left with 2p p times 2 is 2p p plus 1 divided by since this is 1 times 1 so it will be 1 therefore the answer is 2p p plus 1 so the answer would be b 2p p plus 1 question 18 in diagram 11 q is a point on the surface of the earth n is the north pole and s is the south pole n is the north pole and s is the south pole n o s n o s is the axis of the earth find the longitude of q north to south these are longitude east to the west will be known as latitude so we are supposed to find the longitude of Q which lies on this line here N Q S the information given equator is equivalent to zero and the line the angle from this equator to north of this meridian this is meridian Greenwich to the other side of the meridian Greenwich is 110 degrees to the west from here when we move this way is to the west this way is to the east therefore we know the meridian Greenwich gives you a right and the information given here is right angle and this whole degree here is 110 degrees if this is 90 and this whole thing is 110 therefore the line between these two longitude would be 20 degrees so the option given the answer would only be either a or c b cannot be the answer nor d so which is the answer is it 20 degrees to the west or 20 degrees to the east if we see meridian Greenwich is here equivalent to zero degrees and we are moving towards Q longitude Q which means we are moving towards the left meaning that we are moving towards the west therefore the answer is a 20 degrees west question 19 express x over 3 minus x plus 2 over 5 as a single fraction in the simplest form x minus 3 x over 3 minus x plus 2 divided by 5 so we will write x minus 3 minus x plus 2 over 5 so we have to make the denominator the same in order to make the common deno denominator we take 3 times 5 x times 5 and this side we will take 5 times 3 and this whole x plus 2 times 3 so we will have a common denominator which is x times 5 or 5 times 3 would be 15 so then we will just factorize it so 15 would be 5 x 5 times x x times 3 will give us 3 x 2 times 3 will give us 6 so this is equivalent to 5x minus 3x minus 6 over 15 then this would become 5 minus 3 is 2x minus 6 divided by 15 so we have to factorize looking at the options given so 2 bracket x minus 3 divided by 15 so the simplest fraction would be 2 x minus 3 over 15 that would be answer D question 20 diagram 12 shows 
the price of two types of fruits. Watermelon, one kilogram is RM3 ringgit and papaya, one kilogram is RM150. Kamala bought X kilogram of watermelon and Y kilogram of papaya for RM60. Write the equation for the mass of papaya in terms of the mass of watermelon. So the first step is Kamala bought X kilogram of watermelon and Y kilogram of papaya. So we know that for every one kilogram of watermelon is RM3 and one kilogram of papaya is RM150. So the basic equation would be 3x which represents 3 ringgit for every kilogram of watermelon plus 1.5y which represents 1 ringgit 50 cents for every kilogram of papaya equals to RM60. So if we, the question says write the equation for the mass of papaya. Papaya is in terms of y. So 1.5y equals to 60 minus 3x. Therefore, y would be 60 minus 3x divided by 1.5. This would give you 40. 60 divided by 1.5 is 40 minus 3 divided by 1.5 would give you 2x. So the answer is A, Y equals to 40 minus 2x.